Hello chat. Today is December 15th, 2020, and we're doing government and social media here on the news today. Thumbs up. There's no sweeping away the detritus. Not of my soul. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're... <laughs> you, but there are some activities that can, uh, you know, give you those temporary endorphins. And you might be thinking, oh, you know, video games, yeah, and uh, food, bad food for me. I could do some drugs. But you could also accomplish something. Because the human <laughs> mind will actually give you rewards for perceived accomplishments. And how could we accomplish something at this late date in 2020? Oh, I know. The level one Devember competition with Linode. You should check that out. There's a link in the description. You get free free Linode credits and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can also participate in the Minecraft competition. I want to say at this point, uh, the bugs in the Minecraft server are canon. It's part of the challenge. <laughs> I think it's mostly stable now, but it was a little rough there. When it's uh, everybody. You know, Wendell unleashed the the Aspies on it, and they have. Thank you, thank the, you. Uh, they've changed so much, <laughs> and it's still a little bit broken. But we'll never find out what it is now because it's just they threw a wall of stuff at it. Most of it probably didn't do anything, yeah. and so it is what it is now. It's yeah. better than it was though, so it is much more stable. If you tried to get on before and you're like, oh, I'm, I can get in, it should be fine now. Just based on looking back through the. You know, like the history of it. I think it might be that Golden Shuffle plugin that's doing it. Really? Really? Because th that's the common know, like, thread that, you, that we have that the other servers that are running fine don't have. Oh, that would... Mm. I think some of those anti-cheat plugins cause their own problems. Yes. But... At the same time, there were a lot of people that are like, I'm not cheating. I just have 73 client-side plugins that are doing right, all this yeah. stuff. Oh, and I'm it's mapping like, the mm. entire server. On yeah. It's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Why is it so uh, close? <laughs> just you know power through it listen you want those prizes yes it's part of it and thanks Linode the li actually if you're kind of on the fence about the Devember challenge you should check out the Devember thread there are mind-blowing projects in that thread and a lot of them are open source you can go fork their repos fork their repos all day long it's really good <laughs> stuff but not for the prize <laughs> we would frown on it. Yeah, we for the prize, if you took but somebody else's work. But for your own personal education and like this is a cool project. I'm going to keep an eye on this. It's really cool stuff. So thanks Linode for sponsoring this. Check out get free credits, $100 in free credits. There's so many cool tutorials in their documentation. You can be imminently more employable. <laughs> what a great catchphrase for 2021. <laughs> Uh, and speaking of 2021, we know that some changes are coming. And who is not employable. And uh, oh, he's, he's got a job waiting for him. Now. <laughs> yeah. We are going to change the president. I know Probably. Of, well, at this point, it's, <laughs> More looking, than it's looking real good. And that will also bring a changing of the guard in the FCC. We already know that Ajit Pai is out. It seems like perhaps, based on some of the recent headlines we're seeing, He's in this like final stage lame duck blitz where he's trying to get as much shoved through as possible. And uh, this is a kind of a big one. We knew that this would come eventually, but I think they improved, like the timetable was moved forward, don't you think? Yeah. To get this done. FCC orders equipment removed and step aimed at Huawei and ZTE. Agency also moves to establish a way to reimburse carriers. FCC, Congress, and Trump are confronting China on a range of issues. So again, this just comes back to if China is making a device that costs them a thousand dollars to make and they're selling it to us at five hundred dollars something there's there's got to be some kind of a string attached to that right maybe I don't know maybe they're just trying to undercut the market improve there like once you get your infrastructure in there you might get the second round do we have that in America do we have cases of the government propping up an industry in order to sell things at below market value? Yeah, electric cars. What about uh, corn? Oh, yeah, no. I was going to say, like, yeah, beef, <laughs> corn, tobacco. Yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of that stuff. <laughs> so, uh, and one we'll be talking about. Yeah. Another ISP getting on the, the public goal. So, with the, uh, the FCC uh, rehash, we will almost surely run into a Democratic led FCC because right now it's 3 to 2. And uh, what do they have? Five or seven? I think it's five. It's five. Yeah, three to two. So they're losing Pi. Now there is one chair that's up for grabs, other than the the chairman who will be appointed. And Republicans are still in charge. So they're like, hey, we're still in charge. 
Senate votes to advance nomination of Trump FCC nominee. This is the one we reported last week where it was like, ah, they probably won't get to this, seeing as how we don't have a relief bill and people are starving and there's record shoplifting for food. But no, no, this is U.S. Senate voted Tuesday 49 to 47 to advance the nomination of a senior Trump administration official who has helped lead the efforts seeking social media regulations on the seat of the Federal Communications Commission. Don't worry about it. You know, if you need food, what was it? We're only nine meals away from anarchy. I think we're on like meal six at this point. I guess it depends on how many you eat. Didn't Congress just go on recess as well? Yeah. Like they made sure to get this shit through, but then they're like, all right, we're done. Christmas season. It's so frustrating. This guy's name is Nathan Simington. I would like to try and be the first to give him the uh, the name of Simpington. <laughs> I'm gonna try to let's popularize that. Whenever you type his name, make sure you put the P in Simpington. If we if we can create a real movement here, his name will be changed into the entire internet. <laughs> and I don't know this is gonna be a bad guy, but. Based on who else Trump has put in the FCC, you got to think he's on the ISP side, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think he's going to be some avenging angel for the internet customer. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of subsidies, I didn't even know this was next. Did you yes, know this was yeah, next? Yeah. Wow, that was that was a uh, 4D chess right there. I was trying to lead into it because it's like the whole it's a, it's a it's like a, a melody. The whole story is like everything leads to everything else. Now this one, uh, we should point out. <coughs> this is not a huge number because no. they, they point in the article that the 10 years. other ISPs are getting way more than this. <laughs> but it does show you that when you get in the ISP game, not all of the money comes from your customers. And maybe this is why the ISPs <laughs> treat us like they do. That's why we've been freaking out this whole time. SpaceX is getting $886 million from the FCC to subsidize Starlink in 35 states. Now, this is over 10 years, so it's about $80, $90 million a year. But the FCC wants it to serve a bunch of rural homes that literally nobody else wants. Also, you know, I mean, that's not even really the headline here. Uh, the headline is that Comcast is getting $1.6 billion or something crazy like I think, that. Yeah, Charter, I think it was Charter. Or Charter, Charter, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they're already insanely profitable. So And already behind on yeah. their promises. Yeah, so just... That doesn't look like a... That doesn't look like a... Uh, what what you call it? Um, capitalism. But one thing about it is uh, Mr. Musk does not need infrastructure. Well, yeah. I mean the, the satellites, but yeah. he's doing that anyway. Well, So he could actually like, use this and meet <clears throat> his goals. Satellites are not a an end-all, be-all solution for literally everybody. There's just not enough spectrum. Well, that's true, but I'm saying like he could actually put that money... Yeah. to giving people internet access. This is maybe not a terrible solution for like rural Montana. And I definitely take this over nothing, but there's no excuse we don't have fiber everywhere. But 100 a month for a backup plan is kind of steep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe the subsidy would cut that. Yeah, yeah. The, that's the other thing. We don't know how they'll use the subsidy. So you could use the subsidy to launch more satellites. You could use it to cut the, the rates on the, you know, for the plans and stuff. You could use it. There's a variety of ways. We're not sure how they're going to do it. Maybe you could just give it all to your son as a small loan. <laughs> the baby? Yeah. Uh. Little X. I don't know what we call him. Douchebag. <laughs> it's not his fault he was born to that family. Uh, well, you know, you can say that a lot about, about a lot of rich kids. You probably shouldn't hate kids just for being rich, but most people do. So this is a story that's going to have some uh, some sparks flying in the comment section, I bet. But uh, no matter where you le land on the, the pandemic issue and the lockdown issue and the mask issue and all of that stuff, I hope that you land on the side of this is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this harkens back to the whole uh, Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Yes, that we were talking about last week. Maybe we'll get some reforms, but certainly too late for this young lady. Did the, the data whistleblower about the thing that we all face hack Florida's emergency alert system? Question mark. The answer is no. Police raid home. There's a video. Now, so you might re we've reported on her a bunch of times. She was fired because she refused to, quote unquote, cook the books. Kind of outspoken. Maybe, you know, maybe a little bit on the spectrum. A little annoying. A little in the, in the best possible way. 
Um, <laughs> but she's been running a website that has data, and she's been publishing the data and all that other kind of stuff. There also been a lot of people inside the state talking to her about, you know, like directives and like the health department's not allowed to say anything and blah blah blah. And she alleges that the governor of Florida, DeSantis, is in, is, in, is involved in all of this. At the end of the day, what she's accused of is sending a text message to 1,700 people through a system that the state provides. It's like an emergency type, but not for everybody, yeah. just and, for the employees. Well, it has all 1,700 people use the same username and password to access the system. It was not changed after she was fired, and that information is posted in a PDF on a public website. Now, she is uh, a little cagey on whether or not she actually did it. I think she probably did. <laughs> but it is a question of, now, by the letter of the law, I that think is, it is a crime. That is not, I, I don't think so. If the, is that if, really hacking, though, if you have the password? But that's, like... that's the problem with that law. It's just, if you log into, I can't remember the wording of it, but if you log into a system that you know you're not supposed to, I was posted on a public website, but she knew <laughs> I mean, she was part of that system. I, I would, uh, at, at best, I would concede that that is a misdemeanor. There is no way that the sheriff's office should no, proceed no. with shotguns. Yeah. She should have gotten a letter. Yeah. And you know, it's like, Hey, don't do that again. Here's at most, here's a court date. Yeah. But yeah, kicking in the door, pulling guns on the kids, which happened. Yeah. Oh, the, did you really read the, the sheriff's report? They were like, at no time were weapons drawn. And then they were like, there's but a there's a video. And they were yeah. like, oh, oh, there's a video. Oh, oh man. So, Another one for the, the Git repository. I think the, when that kind of thing happens, it should be like an automatic million dollars. It's like the police lied no, and you can prove it. No, million it shouldn't dollars. be a million dollars. It should be, okay, bye. <laughs> New cops. <laughs> All new cops. Right. You will never serve in any capacity again, and you'll never have a gun license. We're going to treat you like the felons because of what you did. Actually, let's go ahead and give you a felony. You literally said on the police report you didn't draw weapons, and yet. Isn't that uh, fraud under the color of authority? <laughs> yeah. That should be the death sentence. <laughs> yeah, this is the punishment does not fit the crime <laughs> for sure. And. Uh, I hope that uh, I hope she has a crack legal team. I hope she's able to retire. After oh, this. I'm sure somebody. A lot of big names are going to be thrown. Now she is. I think the government is saying less cases, and she's saying more cases. Right? That's what's yeah. a, a thing here. So yeah. Yeah, Florida wants to stay open, and if they have actual data, they probably can't do that. So maybe they should send swat teams just to random houses and force those people onto the beach to enjoy themselves well it's it's kind of funny there was another article in the miami herald that she was not really involved in but they ran their own story about how the governor's office there's a lot of evidence that he has been doing a lot of things to manipulate the numbers and in that other article they went through it so the governor's office may have got wind of that article and this may have been retaliation for that i mean it doesn't look good the optics of it are terrible yeah. Imagine that. <clears throat> Corruption in the highest places. <clears throat> so, uh, one thing about our lives, that smartphone, smartphones have ruined our lives. But one thing that I feel like they did really well, they helped us with, is always knowing the weather. Remember back in the day, when you had to wait till 15 minutes past the hour on the Weather Channel <laughs> to get the weather? Remember when oh, it was like... On the eights. What? What? Oh, I was at the yeah. eights. I'm sorry. The weather eights. on the eights. You don't remember that? <laughs> no. I used to watch the Weather Channel a lot when I was a kid. I do remember thinking like, oh, today's a good day for me to rake the leaves. And then 15 minutes after I got outside, it's like raining ice sideways. And it's like, what happened? I didn't... Here's something yeah. that'll really date you. Do you remember calling the bank to get time and temperature? Yes, <laughs> time and temperature. Yeah. 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 That was a big call. Sometimes it would it'd be busy for, you know, like half hour at a time when there was a question of, are we going to school today? Yeah. <laughs> Those of you who don't live in the mountains don't know that joy. <laughs> anyway, um, it's great. It's great having constant access to the weather, but are we too addicted to it? Or alternately, are our government, are our tax dollars being misspent in such an amazing way <laughs> that an obvious benefit to the people is just ignored? <laughs> National Weather Service proposes limiting data availability because of bandwidth shortage. This article goes on to talk about, it seems to be talking about um, some of the commercial services that use this and then that repackage it as an app like AccuWeather. And, uh, but at the end, it's like, we need $1.5 million one time for server upgrades. How, and much, it's like, we, how much do we just give SpaceX and Charter? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> just, just, we just scrape a little bit off of that. Just, just a bit. 
<laughs> it also says, uh, okay, well, they're going to probably need more than one and a half million dollars for all that. But again, like. I like this is a, a paywall alternative Anchorage Daily News. This was a Washington Post story originally when I found it. But uh, imagine the terror in Alaska. It's like, wait, you're doing what? <laughs> I'm a fisherman. <laughs> I'm going to go, oh, it's raining sideways with ice. So oh, I'm going to freeze to death. Or even just like, you know, they have other natural disasters in Alaska, like, you know, earthquakes, tsunami warnings, like. But uh, they do point out, like, I think AccuWeather could afford to throw them a few dollars. Yeah. Just a few. But then it's, you know, just if you hit the API this many times, you start paying. For it. It's like the old Google yeah. uh, gambit. Give it to you for free for a bunch of years and then <laughs> yank it out from under you. I don't understand why. I mean, it, it seems like we could set up a nonprofit to mirror the data, or possibly they're doing something wrong. Because if they're just aggregating data into a thing, there are ways to do that and then distribute the data very cost effectively. I think what's happening is it is being aggregated and it's being aggregated in mass because it's, it's very time sensitive. And all those different feeds of it are what's eating up all their. Yeah. It, it seems like that they could change the way that they do that and then it would, it would sort of become a self solving problem. Like if AccuWeather or, wants that data, they have to participate in a swarm that helps distribute that data. Or you know what? Turn it off. See what happens. <laughs> I bet you get you 1.8 million in a week or less. <laughs> and uh, speaking of this one, it's just you know tangentially tech related, but we've talked so much about these folks, <laughs> and they're so bad at what they do, and they are you know like most in the government, they are gobbling up power at a rapid pace, and they will never really admit when that power is misspent. No matter who says it, even if that someone is <laughs> themselves. themselves. <laughs> the TSA Oversight uh, Committee says that the agency's suspicionless surveillance program is worthless and the TSA can't prove that it isn't. Oh, those are those are strong words. But the article goes on to sort of take that apart. And yeah, it, it literally, they've the TSA has charged air marshals with like tailing people and recording them. And it seems like this clandestine, you know, man with one red shoe type nonsense. And literally, it has all been worthless. A waste of effort. At least the FBI, once a quarter or so, finds a scapegoat and gives them a fake bomb. <laughs> Do something for us, TSA. Come on. I would rather that they didn't, because that's going to be a monkey's <laughs> paw type of thing. Well, I was being sarcastic, <laughs> of course. But they said, uh, hey, uh, yeah, we've really accomplished nothing with this, and we have no plans to change anything. Yep. Just keep this train rolling. Glad we're spending the money on that. And, and the marshals, again, people are starving in the streets. But yes, let's continue to fund this. <laughs> it's funny because you know, with our law enforcement, one of the big problems with our law enforcement is like part of your performance review. You cannot be a successful law enforcement agent if there is no crime. So in a utopia, it literally couldn't exist. You have people have to speed for cops to succeed. <laughs> we can't have people obey the traffic laws because it all falls apart. And these marshals are just like, hey, guys, listen, my numbers are in the garbage. I can't catch criminals on these planes. They're not here. <laughs> I'm never going to get promoted. I'm going to have to convince the stewardess to be a terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, every time she comes to give him a drink, he's like, uh, praise a lot. Anything? <laughs> <laughs> Death to America? I don't, I don't, I don't think we have an article on it. But did you see the, uh, the, uh, or do, do we have an article on it? The TSA, uh, the, the, the marshal, uh, the FBI put some uh, Muslims on the no fly list. I we, exactly oh, okay, one. yeah, it's it ties into this because uh, there were some there were some people that the FBI wanted to be in, in informants, and they said no, and they put them on the no fly list. Well, they sued, and the Supreme Court has ruled that they have standing. To sue for having for having done that because it was retaliatory. Well, that makes sense. So that's probably gonna. I mean, that's a mess. Oh, they better not host any databases online. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they better not factually or attempt to factually report, you know, data or or God forbid, send a text message to seventeen hundred people. That's uh, that's gonna get a shotgun in your face. Please, they'll use AR-15s. <laughs> I guess maybe one guy's got a shotgun. Yeah, you got to have a, a broad spectrum of you know solutions to these housewives. <laughs> now, if you can't find criminals on a plane as a U.S. marshal and you need to get your numbers up, let me tell you where you could go to find a cesspool of hardened felons 
And that is, of course, actually, this broad's probably true, isn't it? <laughs> Twitch. Well, that's not where I was going with it, though. It's Twitch. <laughs> Proposed U.S. law could slap Twitch streamers with felonies for broadcasting copyrighted material. Our Congress critters are trying to force this law change through as part of an unrelated other bill that's sort of a must pass bill. So, is this the, was it the defense bill or the, the uh, pandemic bill? No, it's the, the CARE Act, which is not the pandemic bill exactly, but it's the thing that's related to the pandemic bill. Yeah. Okay. So, the, this is copyright stuff that gives you no second chances. And currently, this would be a misdemeanor because obviously. This is not a violent crime. No one's getting harmed by this, really. I mean, except for the rights holders, and it's kind of a, you know, an extrapolated kind of way. But they're saying no, lock them up, felonies. Yeah, that's totally a felony. Yeah. If you accidentally run a game that has a copyright song in the soundtrack, you should never be able to vote again. That's what they're saying. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, Cyberpunk. Did you see that? It's like you've been streaming Cyberpunk and playing it lately. You know that kind of thing. It has a streamer mode where it'll disable copyright songs, except for they didn't get everything. So people have been getting copyright strikes even though that's on. Ridiculous. Yeah. I. You know our only option here between that and what Nintendo's been doing. Did you see what Nintendo has done? There was a tweet last year where Nintendo was like, "Show us your favorite songs from Nintendo property over the year." And so there were like tens of thousands of replies in the tweets that with links to like Vimeo and YouTube and stuff for like <laughs> Ocarina of Time. All of that is just gone. <laughs> Literally, all of it is gone. We crowdsource our legal team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What a bunch of dupes. <laughs> So between that, and, uh, I mean, I, I think video games and stuff like this and, and streaming is, is a part of our culture. The companies cannot own the culture. And it's like, yeah, I know streaming and copyright law and blah, blah, blah. But there has to be an exception carved out here. Otherwise, people are going to take to the streets. There's no, there's enough of us that we can change the law. You should, part of our culture, huh? <laughs> Maybe you should talk to Major League Baseball about express written consent. Because <laughs> no one cares about culture when it comes to copyright battles. Does that uh, just mean that anyone who copyrights their material, like they're just going to be forced out of the culture? No. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, no, I think they're going to win. I, it would be well, nice I mean, like, if they were forced out. Though, like, I mean, if you took it far enough, people would just maybe not play that heavily copyrighted stuff. And then there would be a whole new culture on Twitch of like smaller games because but that's the, all stream. Well, the problem is the, the net just gets pulled tighter and tighter. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, and I don't think it's the creators necessarily. I'm sure some of them feel strongly about it. I want this kind of thing to happen, but you go into the publishing companies. Yeah. That's where the legal teams are striking from. It seems like it's a grift though, because the more that those entities function as a middleman, middleman between developers and like the people doing stuff and the audience the more that the wishes of the creators are at odds with the the wishes of uh they don't care so you know if they make if they perceive that they're making more money now you could argue that just by dropping all this because all those studies about piracy and stuff it doesn't you don't make a lot of money back doing this kind of stuff you alienate your customers yeah and the people who are going to buy it we're going to buy it but they don't care that's also if you're a lawyer and this goes back to the law enforcement thing. You need to prove to a somewhat clueless board that what you're doing, while they're paying you an amazing amount to do, is having an effect. Mm -hmm. So you bring them a report. It's like, look at all these URLs we got taken down this week. <laughs> Aren't we amazing? <laughs> Never mind that all of our fan base is going to now boycott Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The uh, Well, speaking of... Uh, giant corporations that are destroying the world facebook has got to be toward the top of the list right you give it to facebook or amazon who you got in the destroying the world yeah amazon really? yeah i would give it yeah. to amazon yeah because they have the physical footprint as well as the you know horrible they're, promoting overconsumption. they're doing more to damage the planet no <laughs> argument there but i think for, economic as far as the human psyche <laughs> i think facebook is uh there are a lot of old people that are suicidally depressed once they spend too much time on Facebook. <laughs> anyway, uh, Facebook is being uh, kind of attacked from all sides. And you can add, this is not really new, but this is you know the actual thing coming down. Another 
uh, spear in the side of Facebook. The FTC has sued Facebook for illegal monopolization. Uh, the agency challenges Facebook's multi-year course of unlawful conduct. So this one was a surprising one. It's one aspect of uh, what Facebook does, and I've already forgotten what it was. It's uh, Instagram, WhatsApp, the whole practice of uh, like compete with it, fail, buy it, oh, and yeah. crush the leadership. Yeah. And they show it's like you, you've, you've been doing this over and over and over, and it's obvious. There's the boiler snake. Have some thoughts about that. Boiler snake hates the FTC. I really should go turn it off because it's warm today. It is very nice today. It's like a magical day outside. It really is. And uh, one of the most hated things about Facebook that we've talked about recently oh, this was it. is the uh, the Oculus thing. They bought it and they were like, no, no, no. Oculus is its own thing. We're just going to run it. And then, then they run out the CEO. I think he's gone. And then they were like, uh, this is now Facebook Oculus. It's going to be a Facebook thing. But don't worry. It's just a name change. And then they're like, no, you have to have an account. <laughs> and God bless the, uh, I think it's the Germans, right? Yeah. Facebook is hit with an antitrust probe tying Oculus use to Facebook accounts. This is, of course, in Germany. They're probably going to be really successful with this because it's like, hey, you changed the terms of the deal after the fact. I'm not excited about VR, but I figure like maybe someday we'll all be using VR, right? And I really don't want that to be Facebook controlled. I guess we got Valve. Maybe Gabe will save us. And, uh... Not to be outdone, France, the EU countries have really been going hard at the tech companies. It seems like we see stuff like this every week. And the numbers are creeping up there. Usually, these numbers, it's like, hey, listen, Facebook and Google, this is like their toilet paper budget. They don't care. <laughs> but the numbers, that, you know, if you get them often enough, yeah. that, it adds up. Fi uh, France is finding Google $120 million and Amazon $42 million for dropping tracking cookies without consent. <laughs> Turns out that Google and Amazon do that so much that even though they've got tracking consent banners almost everywhere, they don't have it quite everywhere. And they were dropping a cookie before the banner landed, which is not allowed. Mm -hmm. They've stopped doing that, but it doesn't matter. You still got to pay. <laughs> Remember when we were doing that for a global multinational and we were like, you can't drop the cookie and de then delete it. That's not okay. And they were like, ah, it's fine. I, I would point that article out <laughs> it's not fine especially if you're a big target but listen we're just your tech team we're not your legal team what do you know <clears throat> yeah I, I doubt that google like stormed into the engineer's office and they're like what were you doing because there's <laughs> yeah. probably an email chain where he's five different times is like we shouldn't do this <laughs> they don't care please they, they don't care and uh germany and france are they're the big names in the EU. Sorry, all other EU countries, but they get top billing because they have a lot of money. And they are at the, the tip of the spear here when they, you know, I think the EU sat back and they were like, hey, uh, we don't make any chips. And somebody was like, arm. And they were like, oh, wait. Well, that doesn't count. That's not us anymore. <laughs> Plus, the U.S. just bought it. What are we going to do? That's only designs. Germany, France, and 11 other EU countries team up for a semiconductor push. France, Germany, Spain, and 10 other EU countries have joined forces to in invest in processors and semiconductor technologies key to internet-connected devices and data processing. Yeah, I mean, the time on leading-edge fabrication, it's, it's never been easier to order stuff from leading-edge processes and foundries. And there are not enough of them on planet Earth. We had a really good one at Intel. They're a little behind. And there's just not enough production capacity on planet Earth. Even global foundries, with their hilariously ancient 12 nanometer process now, is basically at capacity. And it's just a license to print money. And it's not going to change. I don't think we're all of a sudden going to give up on this technology business. Nope. So, makes sense. Although, with the governments in charge, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not optimistic about it. <clears throat> we'll see. Google, one thing about Google that they have always stood hard and fast on is that nobody gets the recipe. If you know how we rank search results, it's going to ruin us. We must, at all costs, protect the secret. And how much cyber espionage do you think there's been? Oh, probably to a try tons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they're like, no, we're never going to give it up. So this is going to be an interesting, uh, you know, uh, an immovable object 
and an unstoppable force. Uh, Who's going to blink here? I don't see that, but we'll see. I'll explain why. Uh, Google and online platforms told by EU to explain their search rankings. I think it's possible to... Uh, basically, they want to have the algorithm explained to prove that the algorithm is not inherently anti-competitive, that it doesn't favor Google s- services and blah, blah, blah. Which it is. It, d- it definitely does. I think that Google will be able to explain it in generic terms, but when they're explaining it in generic terms, the generic terms are going to be, oh, yeah, we, we recognize that this search may be about video, so we promote promote Google video services. And like that would be, an, they don't have to get technical with that, but that's enough of a of an explanation to violate EU law. So, I don't think so. I think the, these EU guys know what they've got here, and they know that first of all, it's popular to just bust their balls <laughs> and get a good right. sound clip, and they also know that they can extract money. Yeah. So I think they'll demand some concrete details, and Google won't give them up no matter what. So It'll be we'll funny see. when one of the one of the one of these days one of these giant companies will do something really drastic, uh, like pull out of a country, and not really like the economic consequences of it, just as like a show of force. They're like, all right, if you're going to play that game, we're just going to turn it all off. Yeah, I mean, think about everybody in Europe loses their Gmail. Yeah, overnight, and that would be crazy because then it would get to the point where the governments would try to force Google. To provide service, <laughs> and then you're getting into really insane territory. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know, but the people might support it. That might be like a like a Hitler's rise to power type of thing. <laughs> where it's like, how do you move the people enough to get someone insane in power? Take away their Gmail. <laughs> uh, China is constantly the on the receiving end of banned apps. Because those Chinese apps, a little questionable at the best of times. So uh, this week, we will flip that coin on its head. TripAdvisor's app more than and more than 100 others have just been blocked in China. Uh, and China said, hey, yeah, this is just the first wave. These are just the most egregious apps. More are coming. Don't worry. No one is sure why TripAdvisor was targeted, uh, including TripAdvisor. It might be that they have somewhere in there, there's like a drop down that still has Hong Kong in it or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> China hates that. But if that's the case, they haven't found it yet. So. Uh, you know, uh, I order, um, there's a particular brand of USB hubs, powered USB 3 hubs that are great. They take external power. They were made in Hong Kong. I just got another batch of them in. They say made in China now. <laughs> it's just dark times. Uh, we are getting a blanket of satellites, hopefully. I guess the whole world is. But here in the U.S., I think the service will roll out first. And uh, maybe that will solve our terrible internet problems. India is taking a different route. The India cabinet approves setting up a massive network of public Wi-Fi hotspots. This is probably going to end badly, but maybe not. Because public Wi-Fi was not meant for this density of nodes. They are setting up a system where... um, So they had this program in the 80s because nobody had a phone in India. And they're like, okay, so instead of pay phones, booths, we're just going to have local businesses sign up for this program and you can go in and you can use their phone and you can pay them for it. And we're going to manage all that. That's the exact same situation that they're going to try to do here. And like you say, I don't think they're respecting the complexity jump between... 80s phone calls <laughs> and Wi-Fi. Yeah. Uh, if only there was some sort of technology that was designed for this density of nodes and number of devices. Oh, wait. That's the mobile phone network. <laughs> totally wireless. <laughs> Doesn't... You don't need the as many. Although with 5G, I guess you're dealing with similar ranges. Yeah. Kazakhstan is a country that none of us would know the name of if not for the popular movies. <laughs> but it seems like since those movies, they've been more and more in the public eye, and I'm not sure that's a good thing for their no. leadership because they've been caught doing some questionable things. In fact, this is not the first time that they've done this exact thing. They've tried it over and over, and every time it gets met with a, a lot of pushback, as you might imagine, but I, this is the way of government. It's like, oh... You don't like that? All right, we won't do it anymore. But in six months, we'll do it again. Yep. And eventually, we'll wear you down. 
Kazakhstan government is intercepting HTTPS traffic in its capital. This makes the third time since 2015 that the Kazakh government is mandating installation of a root certificate on its citizens' devices. So basically, they want to be able to observe all of your encrypted traffic. And in order to do that, they have to give you an SSL certificate that your computers trust that they then use to re-sign all of the encryption certificates for all of the websites that are out there. You can imagine that a lot of people have a problem with this. I'd say most of them don't understand it. The ones that do certainly have a problem with it. Now, you might be thinking, uh, you know, most of you have paused the video, you're down in the comments, it's like, oh, you can get around that by doing X, Y, and Z. Yeah, it's not a great solution. No. But if you have a low-tech savvy population, <laughs> you're going to catch a large percentage of them by doing this because they're going to go to Facebook and they'll be like, well, oh, Facebook, <laughs> click here to download. Okay, click. Yeah. Do you get the feeling that, like, you, there, there needs to be some kind of, like, grassroots campaign in Kazakhstan to explain what's happening? It's like, you know, a husband and wife are having a conversation in their house, and they're like, wait, we can't have a conversation yet. And then a portly gentleman wearing, like, you know, 1950s Soviet attire comes in with, like, a cigar and just sits down in a chair in the corner of the room. And you can, you can kind of see the, the lit end of his cigar, and then the husband's like, all right, we can proceed with talking. It's like, that's kind of like what, it's, what it is to have the, the, uh, the man in the middle um, SSL certificate there where you know, there's a representative from the government that's just hanging out in your house, listening in. For a minute there, I thought you were going to say, like, uh, we need to try to help the Kazakhstan people by making a, raising awareness of this. <laughs> But I think the sheriff's office might show up <laughs> or whatever their equivalent is to the sheriff's office. <laughs> if you'll think back to, what was this 2017, 2015? I think yeah. it was 2017. It was a long time ago. The, one of the biggest mysteries of 2017 was the Cuban. Some, Cuban embassy. The uh, expats in Cuba or some of the uh, government officials, the uh, diplomats and stuff like that, they got sick in weird ways and nobody could figure it out. And there was a lot of speculation this is still technically speculation but they have some good uh they took the evidence and processed it they have a really good argument of what it was havana syndrome is likely caused by pulsed microwave energy the government study finds report on uh, neurological symptoms of u.s diplomats in china cuba does not address whether the directed energy was delivered intentionally by a weapon so the tissue damage is consistent with this type of uh an event but it's not clear whether it was a weapon or what. But if it wasn't intentional, what would cause that level of microwaves? Yeah. Probably was intentional. That or some sort of crazy industrial accident. But it only affected specific people, right? Yeah. That's and true. it was just people around that one little section. This is not something that happens to you when you don't wait for it to beep after your hot pocket and just press the button. <laughs> they thought about that when they built the microwave. <laughs> yeah, it's got like two, like even the crappiest Amazon Basics microwaves have like two or three interlocks to prevent that. <laughs> because of this kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Now the, the next question is who's responsible? And of course, who do we blame? The Russians. <laughs> it's definitely the Russians. Uh... YouTube is uh, moving to social media now. YouTube, uh, the election was mm, controversial. <laughs> there have been a lot of filings, a lot of court cases. <laughs> Still kind of it. We have passed the a lot of blood. Safe I don't, harbor. I'm not sure exactly what Texas that means, is so but. pissed off at Pennsylvania. I don't even know what's happening. Was Texas there? How is Texas? I don't okay. And why is Texas even? I don't, it doesn't make any sense, but. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know, but. Uh, the point is, the controversy was allowed to exist as much as the big tech companies didn't want you to find out about it. I mean, that, at this point, I'm seeing the the AP is called the presidential election for Joe Biden on every <laughs> page load. You know, I was trying to order a pizza the other day, and it was like, by the way, the AP is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who the U.S. president is? <laughs> so it's weird that they let a lot of that stuff stay up. I, I guess it's not weird. They probably thought they couldn't get away with it. But now, I think what's happened is they're like, you know what, this has died down enough. Let's do it, let's pull the trigger. YouTube waits until a month after the election to act on false claims of election fraud. They had to sneak in the false claims of election fraud. There's definitely some cases of election fraud. I don't think there's widespread fraud, but I don't know. I think there's been election fraud at least since Bush <laughs> won, right? Since, uh, 
since the dawn of time, I think. Well, but I'm saying like this kind of electronic voting type fraud. I have yet to see any evidence that it rises to the level of fraud that a lot of these places are alleging, though. But I don't think there's ever going to be any evidence. Even if it was true, those machines are so easy mm. to mess with. There doesn't have to be evidence. But I don't, at this point, it probably doesn't matter. But it is... Uh, it's censorship. I mean, yeah. even if nothing happens, don't shouldn't we have a record? When well, we get to uh, four years from now, shouldn't we look back and be like, okay, how can we do this a little better? Yeah, but these are also private platforms, so they can do what they want. Huh? That's definitely true. And I won't stop using it as much as I hate it. Come to the forums at forum.level1tax.com where we're not completely unreasonable, only a little bit unreasonable. Depending on who you ask, what users? <laughs> <laughs> Twitter, uh, one of your big Twitter power users, have you I noticed am. this? I did, Is yeah. Is this affecting you? Uh, I was one of the first people that this kind of thing affected, and I just thought Twitter was just losing its mind. But it's a bug in Twitter, and they're like, oh, man, it's a bug. Sorry, we didn't mean that. No, they didn't say it was a bug. They said yeah, it they was did. as... They did later. Oh, what originally, in this story, they're saying it's by design. Twitter users complain of timelines being overrun with promoted tweets. And... Uh, Twitter thought that people were complaining about, you know, you get a promoted tweet and then there's like two tweets and there's another promoted tweet and then there's like two tweets and there's like another promoted tweet. Now, after this, people posted screenshots of six or seven promoted tweets in a row and then they were like, okay, yeah, that's a bug. But it's still pretty bad than like when literally every other tweet is still promoted. The thing with the election in the U.S. is that there was so much money for ads in the run-up to the election that these platforms literally could not place all of the ads you know, as as many billions of page views as they had, there just wasn't enough page views to fill the capacity that they had for the ads that they sold, which is sort of insane that there's that much money in an election. They pointed out a great workaround here, which even if they're not running too many promoted tweets, seems like a, a solid idea for me. Now, personally, I don't follow anybody on Twitter, so I don't have this problem. My page is beautiful and empty. <laughs> but uh, if you block... Whoever paid for the promoted tweet, you will never see a promoted tweet from them again. Or, in fact, any tweet. Hmm. So, when you see a promoted tweet, block it. Neat. I'm sure they'll close that loophole. Probably, yeah. But YouTube did that, too. Because I used to, like, unfollow a bunch of stuff, and it still shows up from time to time. And if you click the not interested thing and say, don't recommend this channel, it won't show up in your, uh, in those little channel things. Wow. Well. The behaviors of that is different on mobile, too, because, like, if you do stuff on desktop and you do stuff on mobile, it'll be completely different. Spotify is like that, too, and it's like, what? Well, yeah. Why? Why does that have to be different? Can we it's, not just... It's so stupid. It's probably because of all the tracking and stuff. They're like, well, we can't duplicate all that data. It's just <laughs> It's crazy. And our final story is uh, perhaps a, <laughs> a bright note on all this negativity, although uh, some of the more cynical among you might be a little suspicious <laughs> of the motives involved here oh we don't have a headline let's go down to the headline 46 year old american mom arrives uh in nigeria to marry her 23 year old instagram lover there they are is that a spring fall relationship uh yeah i guess so although uh may december usually goes the other direction doesn't it yeah she's the ultimate cougar <laughs> <laughs> so they interviewed him uh they were on some other group and met and he actually white knighted her to warn her that another Nigerian was scamming her. <laughs> and that's I how he was a prince. I'm sorry, Krista, what was it? I said I thought he was a prince, the Nigerian prince. Well this guy's not, but I think the other guy might have been claiming to or something like that. No. So this guy swooped in and he was like, No, no, no. That's a scammer. She was like, oh my God, an honest Nigerian. And they uh, developed this romance. And she flew to meet him. And now they are going to get married. And he's coming back here. Neat. And they're going to have a bunch more kids. They've already announced it. I uh, Well, she's already got two kids. So. Yeah, they're having more. Um, and I think she was not. All, she also seemed to be intimating that she can't live in Africa because. Um, joint custody. Joint yeah. custody of the kids. So. Also, I think that she's going to be the breadwinner. Yeah. He's a barber. Mm. I guess he could get a job here. Yeah. That's a pretty reasonable living around here. You know, even during the uh, 
the crisis with everything shut down, the barbers have done okay. So uh, they said that uh, women in their forty between forty and fifty marrying Nigerians has exploded recently. Wow. Why? I guess it's kind of like a mail order bride, right? Except in the opposite direction. That's bizarre. And you don't have to pay anything. They're lining up. This woman, this woman could have had this guy, and not been a teen mom. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, like yeah. Could have mm-hmm. given birth, yeah. I hadn't even considered that. Yeah. <laughs> and not been a teen mom. Would Chris, have been the age is a number. Yeah, but there's Here's... a big difference in life experience between those two ages. Now, I will give you credit, Krista, because most people would be fine with this, but if you reverse the genders, they would not. It's a little weird, I think. <laughs> it, if you reverse the genders, they would not. And then depending on how you play with the... The, the number of years separation, like it just gets worse. Yeah. <laughs> now, well, the, a, a huge question here is, and you ask this question during all of the, like, you know, the Russian bride or whatever, or, you know, Chinese girl that you bring home or whatever. Will he stick around after the allotted time that he gets to keep his citizenship? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think so. What happens <laughs> if, if he cheats on her? And she gets a divorce. He's got to go back. Does he? Yeah. Is there an amount of time where that'll... Oh, yeah. They're serious about that. I know they'll come in your house and like kind of creep on you. Yeah. No. I was, yeah. I was friends with somebody where they did this and the, the border people were convinced it was a sham marriage, but it wasn't. Do you I, remember what the the cool down period is? It was like a year and a half, two years. Oh, he can do that with his eyes closed. Mm. Come on. His life's going to be so much better here in the U.S., and he'll be 25 well, and she'll be 50. He'll still be a young man. Yeah. I don't I don't think that you get citizenship that quick though. You got to get you got to get citizenship. So he'd have to get citizenship while he's while he's married, he's fine. But if they get a divorce and he doesn't have his citizenship, then that's bad. Okay. Well, so maybe he's pulling 2 3 years. He can do that. He can do that standing on his head. Well, and they're they're talking about wanting kids, but like at forty six, can she safely have any more children? Like, Does that lock you in? Oh, it yeah. might, but like, I mean, that might not even be a concern for him at her age. She's gonna be. She's gonna put her. This went dark, Chad. I'm sorry. She's <laughs> gonna put her life savings into in vitro, and have like a little mutated child, <laughs> and then he's gonna be like, she's gonna be calling him. It's like I'm. It was a. We just had the baby. Where are you? You know, and it's like just going to voicemail. Oh. Oh. I don't know. Medical technology. I believe in medical technology. It'll be a normal kid. We'll see. Probably. That's it for today. What do we got tomorrow? Business and uh, I think we'll do business and security tomorrow. There wasn't one business story about the cyberpunk launch. Was there? I don't think so. I didn't. I kind of left them out. I mean. It was a uh, fifty million dollars of pre-orders a day. Well, let's just let's just make a mental note to talk about cyberpunk <laughs> in tomorrow's episode. Well, in fact, we'll do a cyberpunk intro on Wednesday. We Look will. forward to that. Woo. I'll be shaving half my head, <laughs> getting some face tats, getting some yeah. bionics. Yeah. Nice. All right. We'll see All you. Right, chat. Bye.